I still dream about it. Even after all this time, it's like my mind just won't let me forget. I'll start to fall asleep at night and then suddenly it takes control. I see her splashing about in the water. Darlene, my beautiful little girl. And she's splashing about and she's like belly flopping on this giant pink inflatable. But her feet are off the ground and I feel this, this wind just come from behind me and it just violently shoves her out to sea. And I go into the water but she's getting further and further away. And her arms are out to me and I reach my arms out to her. And then I wake up sweating, still two years on. Plumman and me, we were come from London to spend some time by the sea. Uh, not much fresh air in London and uh, we needed fresh air. Plumman and me, we best friends. Uh, UK is not Bulgaria, but UK is home for Plumman and me and many of our friends. Plum and me, we, we have the beer, we have food, we have lots to talk. Uh, Plumman, he like to walk. Me, not so much, but he went. So we walk by the sea. We'd never been to this beach before. It was my husband's birthday and he wanted to get out of Sutton for a while. So we decided to get beyond the boundaries of the M25 and go to the seaside. There were lots of other families there and their children were playing with our children in the shallow water. And Darlene, she would have been four at the time, she was playing with this giant pink inflatable donut that she insisted we bring with us. And I do like to know where they are and what they're doing, but you just can't keep your eye on them all of the time. There were lots of families on the beach that day. Lots. And nearly all of them had children messing about in the sea. It really annoys me how irresponsible they are. There were signs everywhere clearly stating that going into the sea in that area is a bad idea. In fact, it's banned. It's banned because it's dangerous. To swim and especially to play with inflatables. And here were people, families, yet again doing both. And I looked back towards the shore and I saw that Darlene had drifted out just so much further when I'd looked moments before. And I started to walk into the sea and the tide was against me and she was drifting further away. And I tried to stay calm, but to be firm. And I said, Darlene, I need you to get off now and I'll come and I'll get you. I said, Darlene, get off now. And she was just drifting further and further away. And she was smiling, she thought it was funny. And I got scared. And the further in I got, the water got deeper and deeper until it was right up to my neck. And I panicked and I just cried for help. Plumman, he, he stopped talking. Um, we hear shouting. A uh, woman, she's shouting, my baby, my baby. Uh, Plumman, he moved very fast. My baby, my baby. She was shouting it over and over and splashing about. My baby, my baby. And I didn't know what to do for the best. And the wind was pushing her away. And I saw a man coming towards us. And I was shouting for him to help me. And he just didn't hesitate, not for a minute. Plumman, he walked into the sea very quickly. Uh, he's soon too deep and he starts swimming. Uh, the boat was going away, 50 meters away. Uh, he's swimming hard to get to her. Uh, the sea not making easy. The guy was swimming out to her. He was having a job. The wind and the current were working against him. I went and stood on the shore. It was a strange feeling. I had a growing sense that this thing was getting more serious by the second. I shout for help. Uh, I run into the sea and uh, I start to swim towards Plumman. He reached her. He reached her. And he put her on top of his shoulders and he had hold of her. And I felt she was going to be safe. And I felt relief. But he was struggling. He had the girl on his back, but his head kept getting pulled under. He was battling the current, but with the extra weight, there was no doubt in my mind that he was in trouble. My instinct told me to get out there, and so I did. I ran in. 
Now, I'm a good swimmer, but that current took me by surprise. It was incredibly strong. They weren't far from the shore now, but something just didn't look right. He wasn't moving right. Plowman, Plowman, I'm shouting his name. Uh, but his head was in the water and there is no talk back. I reached the guy just after another fella did. He'd done incredibly well to get the girl this far. We were only about 16 feet from the shore. The other fellow was saying something to the guy. I couldn't understand it though, it was in a foreign language. The guy wasn't responding though. I say to him in my language, I say, pass me the girl, pass me the girl. But he is not moving. Uh, there is other woman that I take the girl, I pass the girl to the woman, which I'm pleased about, because it means I'm free now to help Plamond. The other fella handed me the girl and she held on to me tight, really tight. I swam the rest of the way and headed towards where her mum was waiting. I was just so happy to see Darlene that I just held her really, really tight and I just didn't want to let her go. You know that feeling when you've wanted something for just so long and then you've got it? Those minutes felt like eternity. But there was something not right. I was aware of something going on, a commotion down at the shoreline. He's face down in the water. I, I turn to him. I see foam in his mouth. I'm very worried for my friend. I swim back to the shore, and just trying to pull him. But it's very hard. I went back to help drag him out of the water. He wasn't breathing. He's not breathing. He wasn't breathing. I started giving him CPR. The lady was pressing his chest and trying to breathe for him. She was so strong. She kept going for a long time. And I was willing him to spit the water and start breathing. Come on, come on! Nothing was changing. I, I say in my language, Haid, Devurvim, come on, let's go. You okay? Girl is okay. You did good, but nothing. I didn't want to stop. I didn't know what I was expecting. I thought maybe I could keep going until help arrived. She kept going for 45 minutes. 45 minutes. I knew. They did not tell me. I knew. The air ambulance arrived and the paramedic jumped out and I just hoped upon hope that they could do something to bring him back round. There was nothing they could do. He was pronounced dead right there on the beach. They suspected it was a heart attack that caused him to drown but it later turned out that it wasn't that. The coroner said that he was overcome with exhaustion. That guy literally gave everything he had. I didn't have the chance to say thank you. He was a brave and honourable man. If he'd have thought twice, I would have lost her, and he saved her. He saved her.